Okay, so today we're going to be talking about um, mystery novels and why they continue to be popular um, throughout the ages. They seem to be timeless. And for our grammar skill, we'll be working on the definite and indefinite articles of the and a. And um, for our pronunciation, we'll be doing the schwa vowel, which is a. Okay, so first I'll just start off by reading the article. It says, The whodunit mystery shall ever remain a popular genre of literature, the prime reason being that it's the only genre where the reader actually must interact through, through thought and vis visual, sorry, visualization to fit the pieces of the story into place. A crime has been committed, who did it, and why. Human race is naturally curious. Everybody wants to know what's going on. It's like hearing a police ambulance or fire siren on your street. Who does not go outside to see what is going on? Who does not slow down to see what's going to see what's going on when passing a car a car accident? I don't believe there is anyone who does not turn their attention to any public altercation in their presence. We simply have a need to know what's going on. The mystery story appeals to the sense of curiosity, gradually feeding the reader the reading gradually feeding the reader clues as an occasional red herring. As the story progresses and the reader is fed more clues, the need to find the solution becomes greater. The reader has challenged himself to solve the mystery before reaching the final chapter. Success at meeting this challenge is the greatest high that a mystery lover can experience. The genre of mystery is perhaps unique in the fact that a mystery story can possess qualities of other genres, poetry, history, romance, sex, violence, and gore. A good mystery novel can indeed um, suit the taste of any reader. After all, what better way to spend a dark stormy night than to curl up with a book that's got a puzzle to solve and loaded with suspense? That's the article. Then for our pronunciation, we're talking about the um, uh down. So this the short relaxed vowel. Um, it's like a short, relaxed A. It says, a difficult sound for many students is the short, relaxed vowel in a uh, and the. You may mix them up with the stress forms A, like the name of the letter A, and V, which is not how we say them most of the time. Um, how would you feel if you did all of the things you wanted to do before you die in one week? Would you feel tired? It says, what sound do you often make when you come home from a long day? What about after you've eaten too much? You might go, Ugh, that, that sound is the laziest vowel sound. It works hard because it is everywhere, especially in our articles. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, and, and the. So that's what we'll be talking and practicing making the uh sound. And for our grammar, we're talking about our articles. So... It says, first, use the before nouns known to everyone or just the people speaking. This is the most general rule. Other rules are listed below. Um, it is used for singular and plural nouns, the teacher, the students, a topic that's been introduced in conversation. So the guy says, where's the beef? Um, when you're referring to the sun, earth, and moon, but they're not capitalized. For example, the earth, the moon, the sun. Um, if it is capitalized with this example, people on Earth have built magnificent cities. There's no need for uh, an article in that sentence. Um, a class of people, the rich, the poor, the young, the educated. Uh, large bodies of water, such as rivers, oceans, and seas. The Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Nile River, the China Sea. Um, mountain ranges, such as the Rockies, the Swiss Alps. Uh, forest, deserts, peninsulas, and gulfs, the Sherwood Forest, the Gobi Desert, the Florida Peninsula, the Gulf of Mexico, island chains, the Hawaiian Islands, the Canary Islands. Um, before names of political and government entities that are followed by of and a name, 
for example, the United States of America, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Certain countries, but use the before certain countries, but never before a country with only one name. The Netherlands, the United Kingdom, the Dominican, the Dominican Republic, the Philippines. Um, let's see. Points on a globe, so the Tropic of Cancer, the North Pole, the Equator. Um, so then, second, you use a or an or um, before singular nouns not known to everyone. For example, a is used before a noun starting with a consonant sound. An is used before a noun starting with a vowel sound. Um, used when introducing a new topic. I saw a horse today. Before singular count nouns, a cat, a park, an elephant. Before number of words, a couple, a dozen, a hundred, a million. Um, in quantity expressions, a few cars, a little milk, a bunch of candy. The third, he will not use an article before certain nouns, before non-count nouns. I want milk. Courage is important. For plural nouns, I want two eggs. I saw two horses today. Um, for most countries, I visited China. I traveled to Russia. Uh, cities, towns, and states. Seoul, Jackson Hole, California. There's no um, article before there. Uh, names of streets and avenues. 10th Street, 10th Avenue, and names of continents. North America, Africa, Asia. So in those instances, you do not need an article. Hi, Liliana. How are you? Hi. Can you hear me? I'm really good. Have you? Did you have a good day today? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, I, um, but can you hear me again? What'd you say? Can you hear me? Okay. No. Hold on one second. I'm gonna put my earphones on because I can't hear you too well. Okay, I can hear you now. Okay, no, so I have the same problem. <laughs> Maybe uh, my connection is slow, so uh, the first time. Maybe the shoes can't hear me well. Yeah, I can hear you really good now. Okay, so uh, sorry for being late, but. Uh, uh, oh, I, no I, problem. Uh, uh, long uh, dinner, sorry. So uh, I just finished. What do you have for dinner? Uh, no, salad. Uh, with salad? a ham sandwich. And, oh, that uh, sounds good. An apple, a uh, fruit, uh, an apple, and um, no, that's all. I try not to, to eat a lot uh, for dinner. Uh, that sounds really healthy. Yes. <laughs> I, I really uh, I eat uh, well at lunch, uh, lunch and breakfast. But at dinner, I think it's better not, uh, or to to eat something like uh, like like a sandwich. Yes. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to eat healthier. It's hard because I like foods sometimes that are not healthy. <laughs> I me mean, too. But uh, <laughs> I I say okay. I try not to to eat a, a lot of sodas, uh, a lot of um, uh, grease food at night. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe in if you eat something uh, light, you could sleep well. 
Yeah, I agree. It's it's better for you. It helps with your sleep, and also you feel more energetic when you wake up. So uh -huh, yes. I'm trying to eat more fruits and vegetables every day. Uh-huh. All right. It's very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so today we're talking about um, mystery novels. Do you read mysteries? Uh -huh. Not, not, not a lot. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about why this type of book has been popular for so many years. Because there's mysteries that were written, you know, hundreds of years ago that are still popular now. And they're still writing them, so we're talking about what makes those special. Um, for our pronunciation, we're working on the uh sound, like in the or in the definite, in the indefinite article, uh. So, um, so we're talking about when you see... This letter. How do you usually pronounce it? Uh, uh. Okay. So what? What if you see? How would you say that? A uh, cat. Okay. And. Back. Mm, cat. Okay. So that sound. That uh uh. Um, that's kind of a difficult sound for a lot of people to make because it's such a lazy vowel sound. So um, they talk about if you were to do all the things that you've always wanted to do before before you die in one week, how would you feel at the end of the week? Would you feel tired? Uh, at the end of the week? Yeah, so let's say you only had one week to live and in that one week you did everything you've ever wanted to do. Do you think you'd feel tired at the end of the week? Ah, uh, uh, yes. yes, a little bit. I think. So they, if you, if you, what kind of sound do you make if you're really tired? Like if you just, you're absolutely exhausted. Like, is there a sound that you might make? Uh, yes, I, I think if you did um, many things, uh, or three or four uh, things at, at the same time, yes, mm -hmm. you can. Uh, Focus on anyone, on anyone, yes, anything. So I think maybe it's things why when, for example, you learn uh, three or four languages at the same time, mm -hmm. your mind is is tired. Yeah, uh, you you so have a lot of things in your mind, a lot of concept, a lot of um, uh, grammar structures, and you can't focus mm -hmm. in in any any topic. Right. So, have you ever just been really tired and you've gone, ugh, like that? <laughs> just you're yeah. so exhausted. Ah yes, when I was uh, working, uh, at, at the end of of the week, I felt myself uh, really exhausted. <laughs> and, uh, I think it's a lack of energy. So you only like to to rest or to go to bed and rest all the weekend. Yeah. Without doing anything. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that sound that you make, you know, that uh, sound, that's the sound that we're going for. So when you say, like, a cat, the cat, it's that same uh that you do if you've eaten too much or you've slept too little or you've been too busy, that same uh, that oh, sound. Oh, okay. So oh. can you do it, like, really long, just uh. Uh, uh, so, cat. Yeah, the the cat. Yeah. So it would look maybe like this if you saw it. Uh. Uh, uh. Yeah. Okay. So when when we see the letter A by itself, we often think of it as just that letter to, for it to sound like a long A. A cat, A dog. Okay. And it's not necessarily incorrect. It's just not the way we pronounce it most often. Uh -huh. For example, the... You can say the, but we don't use that very often. That's actually pretty dated. It's mm -hmm. it's an older way of saying that word. Okay. So now we just say the and uh. The uh. Yeah. So um, we're going to go on to the grammar, but just as, as we're talking about articles today, as you're practicing, try to make sure you're saying your short, relaxed vowel sound. So uh and the. Uh, uh, and the. Yeah, so it's kind of like the word ugly. It's kind of like an ugly sound. It's just that uh, uh sound. 
Uh, <laughs> it doesn't sound pretty when we say it, but we need to be able to say it right. So, uh, like ugly. Uh, uh, ugly. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, first we're going to talk about the definite article, the. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are some rules as to when we use the. So, the first one is when you're talking about a noun that is known to everybody or just the people speaking. So, for instance, if you're in a conversation and you bring up a noun that everybody is familiar with or that the people you're talking to, if they know what this is, then you use the. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, if I were to talk to you about this class, would I use the or would I use a? Mm, the. Right, because you know about this class. Um, but if I were to talk to you about my classes that I'm taking at a university here, mm -hmm. would I say the or would I say a? Uh? Uh? Mm, I'm not sure because I, I don't know about your about the, the classes that you uh, teach in other places, in other universities. Exactly. So you're, you're right. So I would use a. Uh. So I would say, you know, I have a class at this school, but if I'm talking about a Colingo class, which you're familiar with, then I would say I have, you know, when I'm talking about this class right now, the class will start in five minutes. Mm -hmm. So you know which class I'm talking about. You're familiar with this now. Okay. When I when I am familiar or when you mentioned before, yes, uh, I always use the. Yeah. So if it's something that we're both familiar with or um, if it's something that everybody would be familiar with, for example, you know, the president. You, if you're living in the same country, then we all know which president you're talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the most general rule for using the, whenever it's a noun, because before all of our nouns, mostly, we use articles. There are some exceptions, but this is, it's one of the biggest difficulties when people start learning English. They usually don't remember to use articles. They drop them. Uh -huh. So this is something that will help you um, with fluency. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here are a few other rules on when to use the. Um, you use it for singular or plural nouns. So can you give me an example of a singular or plural noun with the definite article the? Okay, in singular, for example, the sun. Very good. And plural, um, the... Uh, the books. Excellent. So um, another another time we use the definite article the um, is a topic that's been introduced in conversation. So if we're already having a conversation and I'm introducing a topic, then I would use the. So can you think of an example of that? Mm, uh, when when we start a topic, for example. Uh, uh, I, I can uh, say, for example, uh, I went to the concert, uh, the rock, rock concert uh, yesterday. Yeah, very good. Okay. Um, let's see, I think we have an echo. Uh, um. Hi, Gabriel, how are you? Hello, teacher. I'm fine. Yeah, are you having a good day? Yeah, I had. <laughs> is it nighttime where you are, or is it daytime? Yes, uh, it's 10, um, 8 p.m. Oh, that's really close. You're only an hour ahead of me. It's really? 9.18 here. Oh, yeah. I'm from <laughs> Brazil. So um, we're talking about definite and indefinite articles. We're talking about right now the definite article, the... Mm -hmm. And when you use this, so we already went over, you use the when you're talking about a noun that's known to everybody or to the people who are involved in the conversation. And then for our second rule, you use it for singular and plural nouns. So um, Liliana, can you repeat the examples you gave me so that um, Gabrielle can hear them? Okay. Uh, for, uh, for example, uh, the son, because it's... Uh you always have to use the with with son. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a specific word. 
And uh, if I uh, talk about uh, a plural noun, I can say the books. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. because um, yes, I, I I talk about an, uh, about the specific books. Very good. Mm -hmm. Those are great examples. So our third rule for using the is a topic that's been introduced in conversation. So I'm going to give you guys a sample sentence, and then I want you to try to come up with one on your own. Okay. Teacher, just a second. I'll put the charger in the notebook. What do you say? I'll put the charger to the notebook. Just a okay. Second. No problem. I think. I think he's still charging it, putting his charger in. Um, while we're waiting, uh, I know we we had kind of already discussed this a topic that's been introduced in conversation. So um, Liliana, mm -hmm. I'll just talk to you for a second while he's working on his charger. So can you give if you notice this example here? It says so the guy says, "Where's the beef?" Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I can see it. So what topic has been introduced? Uh, the, beef. Mm, the topic is uh, uh, he, he talk about uh, food. Yeah. Um, so because the topic's been introduced in the conversation, he needs a definite article. So can you think of an example um, of how to use that when a topic's been introduced in conversation? Mm, okay. Um, for example, can I say? Uh, uh, how how do you think about the meeting that uh, yeah. we had yesterday? Very good, excellent. Um, how about you, Gabriel? Can you think of an example of when we would use a definite article when we're introducing a topic into a conversation? Uh, like the yes, teacher. Yeah. Like the yeah, like the. Uh. Oh, there are a lot of examples. Uh, let me think. Uh, I like it, the the match. I don't know. Yeah, that's really good. So if you're talking to your friend and then you decide to talk about maybe a sporting match you've been to, then you would use a definite article. So I really enjoyed the match because you're bringing up a new topic in conversation. Mm -hmm. so, very good. Um, so we're going to keep, there's actually a few more rules here for the, so we're going to keep moving along. Um, you use the when you're referring to the earth, the sun, or the moon when they are not capitalized. For example, if you're just referring to the earth in general. But in this sentence, notice how we do not use a definite article. So people on Earth have built magnificent cities. We don't say people on the Earth. Mm -hmm. So whenever you capitalize Earth, Sun, or Moon, you do not use a definite article. Mm -hmm. oh, by the way, teacher, what's magnificent? Uh, magnificent is, like, do you know the word fantastic? Or mm -hmm. do you know um, the word awesome? Yes. I got it. I got it. it it's it, kind of like it awesome. It seems like a, yeah, it's so, similar to a word that we use in Portuguese. Yeah, you 
pretty much only use it for things that are really great. Like, you wouldn't just call anything magnificent. It's, you know, mm -hmm. things that are really, really amazing. Yeah. I've heard that word in a music, uh, in, a, in a song called The Magnificent Seven, but seven, uh, what, what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not familiar with the song, but it might, if it refers, it could refer to seven anything. It could be seven people, seven things, but whatever they are, they're amazing. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know the song. <laughs> I'll check the lyrics to see if there is some reason, some some meaning. Yeah, if they're calling them magnificent, there's something pretty amazing about them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whenever the rule here is whenever you have the word earth, moon, or sun, if it's in capital letters, then you do not use a definite article. Uh, with song, is the same? Yeah, if it's capitalized. So it's un it's not common to see sun used in this instance. Like you see people on Earth have built magnificent cities. You won't see the word sun used in that same way because, you know, we don't often talk about things that are living on the sun. Mm -hmm. So most of the time you will use the for sun and moon. It's just usually the earth that you see it change up a little uh, bit. Uh, only with earth. Yeah. I mean, you might very rarely see them do it with sun or moon if they're being, if it's in literature, but it's not common. Mm -hmm. So when you use it, just use the. Okay. Okay, so our next way is a class of people. For example, the rich, the poor, the young, the educated. So whenever you're talking about a group of people or a class of people, you want to use the definite article, the. So can Gabriel, can you give me a, a class of people with a definite article? Uh, the rich people. Yeah, very good. And how about you, Liliana? Um, the old people. <laughs> very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, also with large bodies of water. So these are rivers, oceans, and seas. So if you guys could tell me the largest body of water in your country, and remember to use your definite article. So, Liliana, what's the largest? Um, what country? Are you in Colombia? Colombia, yes. Yeah. So, what's the largest body of water in Colombia? I think the, the largest river is uh, the Magdalena River. Because Very nice. It's across around the, the country. Yes. Okay. From the north, from the south to north. Yes. From the south to the north. Very cool. And um, Gabriel, how about you? What's the largest body of water in Brazil? I think it's Amazonas River. I think it's the the great, like uh, the bigger river in the world. I think. Yeah, you have I the don't know if you have the biggest the Nile, body. Yes. I think the I Nile, Nile is longer. Nile is bigger. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But I think it's Amazon longer, but the water. Amazon is bigger. Mm. Yes. The quantity of water, I think, uh, Amazonas is bigger. I don't know, but <laughs> it's a lot of water. Yeah, so remember, whenever you're talking about such a large body of water, you always want to put the in front of it. So you always want to say the Amazon River. Okay. And uh, the Atlantic Ocean, the, the Victoria Lake, the, you use that with rivers, uh, lakes, oceans, seas? Um, no, the a lake is not. It and it depends on what kind of lake it is. If it's a, like for instance, in America we have the Great Lakes. So for this we would use the because it's a collection of lakes and together they are a very large body of water. But single lakes we don't use it. You wouldn't say the Lake Michigan or the Lake Ontario. You would say Lake Ontario, Lake Michigan. But together they're the Great Lakes. The Loch Ness. Yeah, then in that case you would, well, yeah, you'd use the, but that's because it's, it's a common, it's a common noun that everybody knows about. So, um, whenever you're using any kind of large body of water, an ocean, a large river, and a sea, you always want to use the. But lakes don't really count. Okay. So um, also mountain ranges, we use um, the definite article. So uh, Gabriel, are there any mountain ranges in Brazil? Uh, can you repeat, teacher? 
Sure. Are there any mountain ranges in Brazil? Mountain? Mm-hmm. Uh, there is one, but I, I'm not remembering that. I'm not remembering the, the name. I think it's Pico do Papagaio. I don't know. Okay. It's the biggest mountain. Can you tell me the largest mountain in the world that you know of? Yes. Uh, ah. Forgot, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So, but, uh, but I know it's in in Japan. I in Japan. Only, yeah. I okay. forgot on the No name. problem. How about you, Liliana? Maybe you can help him out. What's the largest mountain you know of in the world? Uh, Everest. Okay. Yes. My largest. Mount Everest. So if you notice, when we say Mount Everest, we don't use a definite article. It's because it's just one mountain. Ah, uh, without uh, yeah. yeah, so when we're talking about mountain ranges, mm -hmm. these are a collection of mountains. For example, the Swiss Alps oh, is a collection yeah. of mountains. Or in America, we have the Rockies. Mm -hmm. Here in, in uh, South America, we have the Andes. Yeah, you have the Andes. Actually, my roommate used to live in the Andes Mountains. So whenever you have a mountain range, which is a group of mountains, you always use the or you have to use an article. So if it's one mountain by itself, you don't need an article. You just call it by its name. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so um, forest, deserts, peninsulas, and gulfs. So I'm going to type these in because I'm not exactly sure which of these you guys have in your prospective countries. So Gabriel, of these things, forest, Deserts, peninsulas, and gulfs. Can you tell me some that you have in Brazil? Yeah, in Brazil we have the Amazon forest. Okay. Uh, desert, I think. Uh, we have a kind of this desert here, but um, it's not a desert. So. <laughs> it's not really a desert. Okay. Do you have any peninsulas? Uh, no, no. And what about no. gulfs? I don't know what's gulf. Um, a gulf is like Mexico gulf. And gulf yes. uh -huh. Yeah, like the Gulf of Mexico. So it's a. I'm pretty sure a gulf is a a piece of land that sits. It's. I think it's landlocked on two sides and it sits on the water on one side. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's been a while since I've had geography class. <laughs> <laughs> I know where the gulfs are, but you might want to look that one up later because I could be giving you very false information. <laughs> okay, how about you, Liliana? Uh, yeah. yeah? Honestly, I don't know because Brazil is a large uh, country. Uh, yeah. I really don't know if there is a... I understand. America is also a large country, and I have not seen half of it, so... I can't say much about my own country. <laughs> okay, Liliana, can you tell us about your forests, deserts, peninsulas, and gulfs in Colombia? Okay, forests, yes, uh, the, um, one part of the Amazon rainforest, and the Guajira Peninsula, in the, in the north coast of Colombia, uh, as well as uh, the, there is a desert in the same area, in Guajira Desert. Very cool. Um, Mm -hmm. um, golf. I, we, we don't have golf. Yeah. <laughs> I, only, I'm, I only know the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> it's the only Gulf I know about. <laughs> I'm sure there's more, but I don't remember them. So, okay. But with this, uh, you use uh, the article the the, uh, the Guajira des uh, Desert, for example. You use yeah, the? you would use the. So for deserts, we always put a definite article or an article in front of it. Okay. Okay. Um, that's like the Sahara Desert, the Gobi Desert. This, mm -hmm. You always want to say the. Um, also island chains, for example, the Hawaiian Islands, the Canary Islands. So if you're talking about island chains or... So this is kind of like the same as like lakes and mountains. When you have one by itself, you don't use an article. If you have a group of them, then you use an article. So just like the Swiss Alps or the Andes Mountains, 
you'd have the Hawaiian Islands, the Canary Islands, but you wouldn't say the Bahamas. Well, actually, because the Bahamas are, there, it is the Bahamas, because there's a lot of them. But if it's just one singular island, then, like Jamaica, you wouldn't say the Jamaica. You would say Jamaica, because it's one island. Okay. Certain countries, but never before a country with only one name. So can you guys think of countries where we use the definite article in the front of the name? The United States. Yes. The Republic, the Czech Republic. Yes. How, how about you, Gabrielle? Can you think of any? I'm thinking. Uh, I'm really not good in geography. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. <laughs> you, you weren't expecting a geography class today. Okay. So, pretty much any country that has two names, like the United Kingdom, the Dominican Republic, or um, like the Netherlands, you want to use an article in front of. If it has just one name, like Italy or um, Brazil or Colombia, you don't say the Italy, the Brazil, the Colombia. It doesn't okay. make any sense. So, all right. And our last point is points on a globe. For example, the Tropic of Cancer, the North Pole, the Equator. These are all points on a globe, and you want to use the definite article. All right, now we're going to move on to the indefinite article, a uh, and an. Okay, where is my mouse? There it is. All right, so you use a uh, and an before singular nouns not known to everyone. And this is a good rule here. I'm going to type this in. All right, so you use a uh, before nouns starting with a consonant a consonant sound, and an is used before a noun starting with a vowel sound. So it's um, pretty similar. So if you're introducing a new topic. Now remember when we were talking about a conversation that we're already having and you introduce a topic, use the. If you're introducing a new topic, like at the beginning of a conversation, then you would use a. Uh, for example, I saw a horse today. the first that you're hearing about this horse. So I saw a horse today. Now if I wanted to tell you what this horse did, then I would say I saw a horse today. The horse was beautiful. It was running around the fields. Because now I'm talking about a noun that we're both familiar with because I've introduced it. Uh, sorry, uh, Stephanie. Hmm? Wait, uh, for example, that we did before uh, when you say or when I say to you, uh, I went to the concert. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a uh, it's not a new topic. So uh, how how can I different 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 different? So how can I know when to use which? Yes. When okay. So or an in in a conversation. If I already know which concert you're talking about, this is not a new topic for me. Then you use the. So for example, if let's say we're friends and we have been talking about the new you know Bon Jovi concert. That was, and you really wanted to go, and then you saw me the next day, and you're like, I went to the concert. I know which concert you're talking about because this is a topic we've already discussed. It's a noun that I already know. Mm. If we don't, if we've never talked about concerts, and you're telling me this is completely new, then you would say, I went to a concert last night. It was really awesome. The concert was this, the concert was that, because now I know about the concert too. I, if I don't mention before. Yeah. So I, I, I have to say, uh, I I went to a concert. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Unless now again, when you use the definite article the, as long as the person you're talking to already knows the topic, mm -hmm. then you can use it. So if it's somebody you're familiar with or a friend and you've already discussed this before, then you don't have to reintroduce it because they already know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. If I mention so, the, the sorry, if I mention the name of the singer, or for example, I went to the mm, to the Coldplay uh, concert. Yeah. If I mention the name of the of the band, the group. I have to use the. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
even if it's a new topic. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Because at that point, you're making me familiar with what you're talking about because you're giving me more information. But let's say, let's say I know that Gabriel has a dog. If I went up to him and I said, hey, Gabriel, how's the dog? He knows I mean his dog. Mm -hmm. I don't have to say, you know, you have a dog. How is the dog? We both know which dog we're talking about. So as long as both people know what the topic is, then you can use the definite article. If it's a topic that's not known to one of the people, then you have to use a or an. Mm -hmm. Oh, got it. Thank you. No problem. Gabrielle, does that make sense? Do you have any questions about when to use which? Uh, no, no. Um, I think I'm familiar with it. Okay. Um, so more rules for a uh, and an. Um, you use it before singular count nouns, so a cat, a park, an elephant. So if it's just a singular noun, you use it. Um, before number words, a couple, a dozen, a hundred, a million, a thousand, you always want to use a. Uh. Um, and quantity expressions, a few cars, a little milk, a bunch of candy. So these are, it's not as many rules as there were for the, but these are the rules for when to use a. Uh. Do you have a, a link about uh, these, uh, uh, these articles that we, uh, I mean, we can review? Uh, let me see. I should be able to use. Okay. That should take you right to the lesson plan that I'm reading from, okay. and that way you guys have all the rules right there for yourself. Uh, but if I uh, okay, if, if I click on on this link, it uh, take me to the classes, Colingo classes. Does it? No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> that is not what we're going for. Okay. Um, see. Okay, I'll, I'm going to figure out how to send this to you guys. But it's, when you're talking about using, uh, it's, there are a few rules, and I'm just going to copy and paste them for right now so that you can write them down. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I will try to figure out how to send you the appropriate link that will allow you to see it. There are many rules, no, for these uh, articles. Okay, so lastly, we're going to talk about when you do not use an article. So you do not use an article before non-count nouns. So if you're not counting it, you don't use an article. So they give the example of, I want milk and courage is important. You're not counting milk and you're not counting courage, so you don't need an article. Um, you don't use an article before plural nouns. I forgot the B. So, I want two eggs. I saw two horses today. So, Gabrielle, can you give me an example of a plural noun where you don't use an article? Plural. Uh, like you said, uh I want two eggs and etc. Okay. Um, so this, like we talked about earlier, you can use like if you have plural nouns such as books or shoes or things like this, you can use an article. But we're talking about like counted things: two of this, three of this, five of that. You don't use an article in front of it. Okay, so most countries and most cities and towns, you don't use an article. So you don't say, um, Liliana, what city are you from? Uh, You're from Bogota. the capital, right? Yes, the capital. Bogota. Bogota. So you wouldn't say the Bogota. I mean, it doesn't make any sense and it doesn't even sound right. So cities, towns, you never use an article. Mm -hmm. um, names of streets and names of continents, you don't use an article. 
So I'm going to copy these so that you guys can remember these rules. Okay. So before we get into the discussion, because we don't actually have a lot of time left, um, do you guys have any questions about about articles, when to use them and when not to use them, and how to use them? Um, we, we, uh, well, uh, sorry, when you say non, um, sorry, uh, with uh, countables now, like a few cars, all it, I don't know, it's not a, uh, I want milk, courage is important, it's non count. And when you say two, two books, two, it's a um, uh, countable nouns, no? Yes, so then you wouldn't use an article. Uh, you know, I have two books. You wouldn't say, I have the two books. Uh -huh. Or I have a two books. For example, when I say, I want to, to school, I never use the school, or I want, I uh, come to the university. No, you say to university. You use the in this uh, example. Um, this is kind of a funny rule in English because it kind of defies the rules. Um, you would say that I go to school, but when you're talking about university, you say I go to the university. Mm. <laughs> and I don't know why. It's yeah. just the way we say it. <laughs> <laughs> so in that instance, although the words are very similar, we, we don't say them the same. So we say... You know, I went to school today, mm -hmm. or how was school? Mm -hmm. But you know, if you're talking about a university, you use an article, a uh, or the. Mm -hmm. You know, are you going to shoot? Which are you going to go to? You know, the university in Phoenix, or going to go to the university in New York? You know, have you chosen a university yet? Mm -hmm. um, if you're talking about Actually, with school, it's the same way if you're talking about um, are you going to go to the school here or the school there. But when you go to a school, you don't say uh, an article. I don't know why. We just drop it then. Mm -hmm. Always, I went to school, not to a school. Yeah, I went to school. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize for English. We just don't use it then. <laughs> I, I, I say I went to the museum. Yes. The Always by museums or the theater? Yeah, you went to the theater, you went to the museum. Mm, okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, so um, in our last 15 minutes, we're going to talk about mystery novels. Um, I asked Liliana earlier, Gabrielle, do you read mystery novels? Mystery novels? Yeah. Uh, uh, no. No? Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about why mysteries are so popular because they've people have been writing mysteries for you know hundreds of years so one of the reasons that the article mentioned was that it involves the reader it's one of the few stories where the reader has to be involved so at the beginning something happens and you have to figure out why it happened when it happened and who done it which is the name of this class which is a common expression in english who done it um. We turn it into one word. So, let's see this word. That word right there is a word that we use to talk about mysteries. You know, if it's a who done it, it's a, something you need to solve, a puzzle. Okay. So, for example, um, if you are reading a mystery, it's kind of like you have to challenge yourself to solve the mystery before you get to the end of the book. So as you read, you're getting clues about what's going on, you're learning more about the characters, and you're trying to figure out if you can find out what happened before they tell you at the end of the book. Mm -hmm. So it, it really draws the reader in and involves them too. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, Sherlock Holmes or this kind of... Uh... Right. So I'm going to ask you guys, we're going to pretend like we're writing a mystery. So if you were writing a mystery, Gabriel, where would the story take place? If I... I do not understand. So if you were writing a mystery novel, so you're the yeah. writer, 
Cute. Where would the story take place? So where would the people be in the story? <laughs> I have no idea. You can you can put them anywhere. It's your story. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe in my city. Okay, so they're in your city? Okay, yeah. so rem remember that. And Liliana, where would the people be? Mm, maybe in Ireland. People are in Ireland, okay. One of these uh, cliff, cliff that they have. Uh, in Ireland, uh, in, yeah. this, in these places. It's beautiful there. Okay, so, Gabrielle, the people are in your city, so what's the crime? What happened? Uh -huh. um, mysterious murder is killing uh, homeless people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for your creativity. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so in Gabrielle City, I'm trying to remember all the details. There's a mysterious murderer killing homeless people, okay? okay. And Lil Liliana, what's the crime in your story? What's happening in Ireland? Uh, maybe a famous uh, doctor uh, disappeared and was uh, found uh, near uh, near of this uh, cliff, was killed near of this, uh, one of these uh, cliffs in, in Ireland. In the north of Ireland. Okay, very good. Now, I want you guys um, to think about this for a second because I want you to try to figure out each other's novels, okay? So I want you to think about who the killer is. So don't say it out loud, and I want you to tell us. Mm -hmm. But who did the who did the killing in the story? And when you when you figured it out in your head, let me know. But don't tell me. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to, to guess. Uh, no, in your own story. So, who committed the crime in your own story? Ah, uh, okay. But, I, but we don't tell you. Yeah, don't tell me. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I saw already. Okay. Liliana, do you know who committed the crime in your story? Uh, yes. Yes, I, I... All right. Now, I want you guys to ask each other questions to try to figure out who the killer is in each other's stories. So I'm going to give you examples. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, Liliana, you said that a doctor went missing. Was this doctor married? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so I want you to take turns asking questions to see who can solve the mystery first. Uh, okay. Okay, so Liliana, ask G Gabriel about his story. Okay. Uh, the homeless. Uh, the homeless. Um, um, have... Uh, did he uh, have friends? The the killer or the no, homeless? The homeless. Yes, they uh, they sleep together. A lot of homeless people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Gabriel, it's your turn to ask Liliana something. <laughs> uh, Liliana, can you give me a brief of the the story? <laughs> a brief? A uh, yes. resume? Uh, um, I, I I know that it's in the in the north of Ireland. Ireland. Yes, uh, he's uh, no. If I <laughs> if I uh, say to you the the story, maybe you 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 can guess easily. Who okay, who only a summary. Yeah. Only a, I will uh, I will give you the summary. So, in the north of Ireland, a doctor went missing, and his body was found near the cliffs in Ireland. And I found out that he was married. Oh yeah. Uh, what's the the story of his uh, his wife? Uh, no. no. Okay. So it's not uh, about his wife. Uh, did does didn't involve in in, in the crime. Crime. Uh -huh. okay. okay. All right, Liliana, it's your turn. Okay. Um. Homeless. In your city, no? um, let me think. Um, uh, did he uh, uh, is, did he rob or stole uh, something from someone? Was the, the homeless? Yes. 
No, uh, they only uh, do things that they do. They didn't. They didn't do anything wrong. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to ask the questions because we're we're running low on time, and I want to know who did it. Okay, <laughs> so um, Liliana. Um, was the doctor involved in any bad business? Was he doing anything illegal? No. Um, no? No. No, he's a, a kind of scientific uh, doctor. He's okay. working in a project, an interesting project. Okay. Um, Gabriel, did the homeless people know their attacker? Did they know who killed them, or was it a stranger? A stranger uh, with a mask. A stranger with a mask. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right, Liliana. Was the doctor's death an accident or was it on purpose? On purpose. It was on purpose. Hmm. Okay. Um, Gabriel, did the murderer have a reason for killing the homeless, or was he doing it for no reason? He had a reason, but he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Uh, Liliana, did the doctor know something about somebody that he wasn't supposed to know? Uh, yes. Oh, I mean, I'm getting at the story now. <laughs> okay, so Gabriel, I have a crazy masked man with his own reasons for killing the homeless. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm not sure what other details I can find out about him. So... Uh... Yeah. Okay, so tell me the tell me the rest of your story. Uh, you, is that it? My creativity is very <laughs> very good by now. I I thought about uh, a teacher. It uh, was a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> a teacher went crazy and killed the homeless. Yes. With a uh, <laughs> very creative. <laughs> with uh, a mentality uh, of converse, conversationalist. Can you understand it? Yes. That is that's a very good story. I would not have guessed a teacher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. That, that's a good one. Okay. So, um, Liliana, let's, Gabriel, we got to figure out why this poor man died. Okay. So he knew something he wasn't supposed to know. Um, so was that something about his job? Did it have to do with what he was yeah. doing for work? Yes? Yes. yes. Mm. yes was great. it somebody that he worked with who killed him? Mm, not exactly. Um, because um, he, he worked for... Um, uh, he discovered a, a, a new uh, metal. Metal? Uh, well, a new metal? Uh, yes, which has a rad radioactive uh, uh, powers. Can I say that? Yeah. So they are. Oh no, of, I've run out of time. <laughs> okay, I didn't I solve the mystery know. before the end of class. <laughs> oh, of, of, uh, I'm very leaded, sad. <laughs> leaded from some content okay. that is interesting in the. Um, in, in the power of this metal because uh, they can make bombs, oh. atomic bombs. <laughs> so, Very <yeah>. clever. <laughs> I liked it. All right. Uh -huh. You guys agree. I have another class in three minutes, so I've got to go so I can okay. load up the page, but um, I'll be right back. And I, I enjoyed both of your mysteries. You, you kept <laughs> me guessing. I could not solve them, so that's the <laughs> best kind of mystery. <laughs> All right. Good job. Okay. If Thank you guys you. have any questions about what we talked about today, then just message me on Facebook, okay? Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. All right. I'll see you guys. Okay. Bye, bye. Good night. Bye. Thank you.